We hunkered down in Shangri-La, waiting for the cyclone to pass and the streets to dry out, before finally packing up and hitting the road with Fernando and Roseanne. What a mess! What a mess. <laughs> hey, at least it's not raining anymore. No, such a... <laughs> I told them to put diesel, right? <laughs> Having followed our exploits on the YouTubes, Fernando reached out to us with an offer we could not refuse. A place to stay for as long as we wanted and a tour of the best riding Brazil had to offer. The plan for the next few days was to sit back, relax, and play follow the leader into the mountains of Santa Catarina. After a tour of the Bavarian-styled Gramado, a popular holiday destination, we took an unlikely detour around a road closure back to the coast. Before continuing inland en route to SC390 and the Ceja do Rio do Rastro, which literally translates into the mountain range of the river of the track which doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Built in 1903, these highly coveted, precariously perched eight miles of asphalt boasts 250 corners and hairpin turns, an average 9.2% grade, and sheer drops into the canyon below. And if that wasn't enough, you can admire your handiwork from the snack bar at the top, a popular gathering spot for local moto enthusiasts and a hungry quachi or two. They don't seem very shy. No, because a lot of people come here, they, yeah. they get food. Are they dangerous? Not really. After complimentary rabies shots, we were back on the road for the short ride to our final destination.
The moto culture in Brazil is huge, one of the largest in the world, and this is the epicenter, Urubici. Isn't it nice? That's a fun road, man. <laughs> a That's a fun turns. road. Look, the KTM chair comes with a with a wrench. <laughs> You're gonna need it. After fueling up at the local gas and grub, searching unsuccessfully for a place to mark our territory, and a failed attempt to claim the throne, we set off into the setting sun for a posada just outside of town. Posadas, essentially a collection of cabins with a central dining area and amenities, are common in this part of Brazil, the second most expensive country in all of South America, after Chile. And while prices vary, most posadas are reasonably priced, and often quite nice, especially compared to the continent's frontrunner in cost of living where you often pay an arm and a leg for below average accommodations, bad food, and even worse service. Brazil, by comparison, is a breath of fresh air. With its shockingly friendly people, amazing food, and accommodations, it takes a bit of the sting out of blowing your daily budget. Don't touch her. He's probably gonna eat your face because you smell like those possums. Possums? <laughs> <laughs> what could it be? What could it be? Yes, it is. It's a billiards table. <laughs> well, wow. it's like the Ponderosa in here. After an amazing introduction to Santa Catarina, we enjoyed the sunset and played a bit of Brazilian eight ball while the weather raged outside. So I've never in my life seen a billiard set like this. Instead of solids and stripes, they have black numbers and, and white numbers. And essentially since the, the black dots or the white numbers are the uh, big balls, those would represent the stripes. And they also have duplicates of each color. And they have pink. <laughs> That's wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 